Welcome to the midweek message from First Grapevine, a United Methodist Church. We're glad you've joined us. Please take a moment and let us know you are watching by registering on our church website or mobile app. We hope this encouraging word will be a blessing for the middle of your week. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, our midweek uh, message time. We're grateful that you've joined us. I'm Travis Franklin, senior pastor here at First Grapevine, and we are blessed that you are uh, tuning in uh, and uh, with us as uh, we have some very special guests with us today. Um, several years ago, uh, we entered into a partnership and relationship uh, with an organization, and uh, it's a project that we've had going on for some time now in this church, and we have two gentlemen that are going to fill us in on all the details about that as uh, we embark upon that journey once again. Uh, we've got uh, John Oller with us uh, today as well as Neil Anderson and they're going to visit with us about uh, a project we do here at the church every Christmas called Operation Christmas Child and so at this time I'm just going to uh, turn it over. Uh, what do we need to know uh, Neil and John about this uh, about this project? Well we um, we're very excited to be here and uh, it's a project that is a worldwide project. That's the beauty of it. We're going to reach out to places in the world that no one has ever reached out before. And uh, John and I are going to share the whole process of how it works and then any questions that you have in addition to it. But uh, it's a great ministry. It fits perfect in with our Jesus project because this is something Jesus said, go out into the world and make disciples. So we're going to do it. So I've got a shoebox here. Um, we've he bought props. <laughs> yeah, we've got... <laughs> That's right. We've got Neil, more. We love it when you bring. Pop. That's right. We've got more in here than we should have. <laughs> this box, um, our church can pick up the box for free. It's uh, going to be coming. Uh, well, we have the announcement in E News when that'll happen. Okay. But uh, there's someone who underwrites all of them, and this year they're going to do 11 million boxes. Oh wow! And that's a lot of boxes. Yes, it is. Sometimes it's a corporation. Sometimes it's a couple people. But that's really a blessing. So. Um, the shoebox packing part, the beauty of it is a child or a senior like us uh, can put together a shoebox. Doesn't make any difference on age, families, or whatever. And we're also going to cover another interesting thing about it. And there's basically four areas you want to focus on. One is um, personal items, you know, socks, uh, hygiene items such as uh, washcloth, uh, soap has to be individually wrapped. Dorothy put this together, so we got to find it. And the water bottle. Yeah, the water bottle. And Band-Aids. Band-Aids, water bottle, very important. And um, then school supplies. You know, calculators. Uh, you've got um, cards, pens, pencils, note cards. Toys are big. Any kind of toy. Oh, yeah. Uh, balls. I'm going to do a, a 10 to 14-year-old child uh, boy. And then, of course, you know, you got to have... Uh, yeah, squeeze, a little doll. doll, that's right. <laughs> Hygiene item two, toothbrush. Used to be able to do toothpaste, can't do that anymore because of the uh, concern with COVID. And um, that's really important that everything is sealed up. Now also, um, you'll receive, when you pick up your box, a uh, how to pack a shoe box. It tells you how to pack that, put it together. Okay. And, and also, what's very important is a prayer card. And you have uh, daily prayers on here for the children for the be a success. So that is the packing portion. Uh, we highly encourage that families have packing parties. Okay. Uh, sleepovers on the weekends with the kids. Uh, you can have some birthday parties. People have had them bring shoe boxes for the birthday party, which is really kind of neat. Okay. Uh, so they can do that. So after they pack the shoe box, then we move to the collection stage. And that's the first week of November, or third week of November, which is November 16th to the 23rd. Put that on your calendar. Very important. <laughs> and um, we will collect the boxes here that are filled and take them to one of the churches in the area that's designated to pick those up. And groups and organizations do this all over. And then from that collection area, then it goes to the shipping area. And the last couple of years, it's been in Capel. And we're talking about a half a million square foot facility wow. that uh, two years ago they had, uh, they packed 800,000 boxes collected. Well, yeah. boxes. It is a lot of boxes. So the, the beauty of it is, is they take each individual box 
and completely take it apart to make sure that everything is what it should be, because sometimes things get in there that shouldn't be. All right. And then they also, if there's voids, they have some other items they can put in there. And then most importantly is they put in the booklet, The Greatest Gift, which is the story of Jesus. Okay. So that goes into there. It's sealed up. And uh, then they're passed over to the shipping or the uh, distribution team. And one thing that needs oh, yeah. to that's, say that's right. about the shoebox. Now, John, you... There you go. <laughs> I guess I need to turn this on. Uh, one thing Neil didn't say about the shoebox, because we spent so much time rehearsing this, was, was you don't have to use the pre-printed -pro, pre ones. You can go buy your own shoebox. You can get them at Walmart or Target or anywhere in the area, and it works just as well. And you can do all sorts of things with it. Now, maybe not open it, but... Uh, <laughs> And so, and, and essentially, mine is about the same thing as Neil's. I have uh, soap, I have washcloths, a ball in there, a T-shirt, socks, a yo-yo, some small cars, and then uh, school supplies on the bottom. The nice thing about this box is when they get it, then they can use it after. Ah. They can carry water in it. They can store uh, food items in it. They can do whatever they want with it. It's not going to be destructible, as destructible as a cardboard box. So oh. you have the option to do it. There also are now, this year, the first year, I think, pre-printed uh, shoe boxes that are plastic as well that you can get. I think you can buy them from the website. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyway. okay. Great. And then once it's all done, the one thing that we have trouble with every year is it be, you, you can't get it closed. It just won't close. Well, the obvious thing is to take a piece of tape and tape it. Right. Uh, it doesn't work too well because of Neil just said they take it and, take and it. they open every box. So that means they have to cut the tape and everything else. Use a rubber band. Put a big rubber band on there. It's perfect. Okay. And then it comes off easy. So that's that's the other side. Of this. I see you have the rubber Hence, band. Hence, I have the rubber right. band right here. <laughs> uh, I will spare you me putting it on. Uh, <laughs> the one last thing over your shoe box, before you bring it in, uh, and before you're done packing it, say a prayer over it uh -huh. for the shoebox to be safely delivered for the child that's going to get this shoebox. Okay. Eh? I think that would be an important thing to do. Yeah. So, fellas, how long have we, how long has First Grapevine uh, been a part of this ministry? 20 plus years. 20 uh, plus years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I got drafted. I, I got <laughs> drafted. drafted. Uh, Bev Campisi was the volunteer coordinator here. And I said, Bev, I got a pickup truck. If somebody needs a pickup truck, uh, just let me know. I'll be happy to help. She calls one day and she said, John, I got a guy in the church. He needs a pickup. He needs somebody to pick something up in Arlington and bring it back to the church. And I said, well, what is it? She goes, I don't know exactly, but you go to this church in Arlington and they'll have it. So, okay, I go down there. I said, you got something for grapevine? Yeah, we have it. So a shoe box. Uh, it, was a, it was boxes of packing boxes for the shoe boxes. So I brought it back up to the church and put it here. And the next thing I know, I get a call from Neil. That was the first call. They came pretty regular after that. And pretty soon I realized I'm the number two guy in this. And there's only two people in this organization. So anyway, that's how I got involved. That's not like volunteerism in the church. Yeah, exactly I, right. I've been in about 10 years. But, that's right. Uh, that's right. Anyway, it was, it's, it was, it's been a wonderful program. Yeah. Well, and of course, you know, we want to express our thanks to both of you for spearheading this and yep. for all of those that are a part of, uh, yeah. you know, putting all this together. I'm sure there's a lot of hard work. Uh, that <laughs> oh, no, there is. The scenes. There is. <laughs> yeah. Share with them about the outreach part. Well, you know, the, uh, once, uh, once we deliver all of these boxes, uh, it, it started out with 1,200 boxes uh, the first year is what they thought they were going to ship in 1993. And so they went to U.S. Air and said, can you help us? And they said, yeah, we'll give you six pallets to ship those 1,200. Well, when they got there, it was 12,000. <laughs> <laughs> so they went back to U.S. Air and they, U.S. Air said, we'll ship them for you. Wow. Now, I don't think it was like, oh, sure, we'll do it. I think there was a little negotiation. But they eventually shipped, it, shipped all of them to Europe for them. Since that time, 1993, 178 million Shoe boxes have been moved around the world. Wow. To 150 countries, 50 of which they don't talk about. They, we're not allowed in those countries. They go in 
on, on different ways uh, and deliver the message of Jesus to, to the children. So once the, once the uh, material gets there, then there's uh, outreach programs and there's specially trained pastors and um, volunteers that set up an outreach service. So basically it's a church service. They distribute these boxes to, and in these, these outreach programs, the areas that haven't heard of Christ, that are maybe high risk, inner city type places, maybe orphanages. And they set up a church program and they invite the families and the children. And after the service, then they hand out the gifts. Some of these children have never, ever had a gift in their whole life. Wow. And now they get one that not only has the things we showed you, but they have the, the greatest journey, or the, the greatest gift is in there that Neil talked about. And then they have the opportunity to participate in the greatest journey. The greatest journey is a 12-lesson program about the life of Christ. When it's completed... The student had, will have a graduation ceremony. They'll get a diploma. And most importantly, they'll get a New Testament Bible with excerpts from the Old Testament in their own language. Oh, so good. it's really, really powerful. They then can take that into their villages, talk to their family, talk to their friends, and convert them to Christ. So that, pro that part of the program started in 2009. And since then, they had 23.3 million kids have enrolled in that. Of that, they know of 11.2 million who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Good. What an amazing story, I that think. Is, uh... And so, for, for me, it, it really comes down to one thing. If we don't go for those kids, who will? Okay. Right. So... Well, and yeah. this church certainly um, is invested in international mission. Yes. Uh, certainly the partnership that we have with Kenya uh, as well as uh, Costa Rica. Um, and those are just two. Um, yeah. There are many others. Uh, but, yeah, this congregation is uh, faithful and fruitful uh, with uh, reaching beyond itself uh, into the world and this becomes another powerful illustration of just how, how, uh, how that happens. Mm -hmm. um, so, do we have a goal we're after here? Or what? Well, what we want to. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> we have a goal of um, 150 plus, and we did last year. Plus. We did 150, and the plus is where we want to emphasize. Uh, we should really, really go past that number really strong. Okay. Um, the beauty of the box is that when you're packing the box, you're, you're over the box, you're, you're putting things in it, you're, you're really bowing to Jesus Christ saying, here's my heart, I'm giving it to this child. And then when the child receives the box, they're receiving the love of God. They physically see now that people with love in their hearts with Christ gave something to them. And they now see that God is real. <laughs> it's really powerful that way. A um, couple of quick stories there's a church in the United States that has 1,500 members, and they do 20,000 boxes a year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They do a weekly packing party, and they have about Sunday school classes, different parts of the church contribute toys or school supplies or hygiene items or whatever. So that, that's pretty awesome. And then there's another story of an 11-year-old girl that had cancer, and this very rare cancer. She's in North Carolina. She packed 150 boxes herself while in the hospital, oh and uh, that's a blessing. And um, the one that really tugged on me the strongest was I took a box out to Alliance Airport and met in the HR department, and I gave it to this 25-year-old lady, and she called me back up, said, the box is ready. And of course, you know, she can drop it off. I said, okay, I'll come pick up the box. And I came there, and it was wrapped in a beautiful Christmas package, with a big bow, and she said, the only regret I have is that I couldn't take everything out and I get in the box so I could ship to the place it's going. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty strong. <laughs> no doubt at all about that. Yeah, but there's story after story after story that's amazing. There are people who receive the boxes who went on to become pastors and start their own churches. There's other children that received the boxes that got married, grew up, went to seminary and, and met and got married and both were given shoe boxes when they were little kids. 
Wow. So the giving just keeps on going. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> Forever and ever. You know, for, so, for someone like me who's not overly religious, and, and I, I can't quote a, a lot of things in the Bible, uh, the one thing that got to me in this program, they were talking about the Great Commission. The end of uh, the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 28, the last six, five verses, 16 through 20, where Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he goes, go out and make uh, disciples of all nations. So, you know, as being not a real um, religious person, I think this is my part. I can do this little bit. I could do more, but I can do this little bit, and that's part of it. And so that, I thought that was a neat approach to it when they talk about, yes, this is part of the Great Commission. Yeah, you know, you guys are an illustration. Uh, today I preached uh, for our online service, and the, the text was the mustard seed oh, yes. uh, from Mark 4, 30 through 32. And, right. you know, Jesus is early in his ministry, and he's, uh, he's just... Uh, trying to get people on board with this new kingdom of God idea that he's come to inaugurate and begin as God's son. And uh, so he's teaching uh, by the sea, uh, and he's out in a boat, and he's been there all day teaching. And this is the final story he closes with. You know, and he talks about the mustard seed uh, being the smallest of the seeds, but it grows into this incredibly large shrub um, that provides, you know, nests for the birds in the air. And the whole idea is that they're starting small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and the whole, what's implied in that story is the work of God's loving uh, in the nurturing of that seed and how that seed is small. But then because of that and mm -hmm. uh, the work of God, it just, you know, all of it. And this is kind of what we're talking about yeah. here. And, John, you're right on board with that. You never know what will happen because of the seed that is planted, um, you know, by your effort. Yeah. And you do. Any mm -hmm. of us that do this kind of work or, goodness me, there are certainly a plethora <laughs> of opportunities <laughs> here at First Grapevine and beyond uh, whereby we become a part of that seed planting. Uh, Jesus starts chapter 4 with the sower of the seed. Mm -hmm. So the seed kind of metaphor is throughout that text, and this is what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about planting seeds, Please. and who knows what happens uh, once that seed of God's love um, becomes a part of somebody's life through something as simple as giving mm -hmm. a shoebox. Yeah. Yeah. And Travis, to your point earlier about uh, our missions in Kenya and Costa Rica, the Grapevine Village, uh, Latvia, um, Armando, when he was here as pastor, when the Costa Rica pastor came here to talk to our congregation, he talked about Operation Christmas Child, and they now pack boxes at that church in Costa Rica oh, to be spread. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Jeez, you know, I was, yeah. I was there in December. We do a big Christmas party uh, for the church, we're in partnership uh, there in La Junta, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, oh man, that is yeah, that's really, really a great that's story. Really that's a great something. story because you know that congregation. Gosh, I don't know how many kids were at that Christmas party. Oh yeah, but boy, there were a bunch of them. <laughs> that's neat. They send them to other countries in Central oh, and South wow. America. Yeah, what a blessing that is. That is um, a blessing. So, of the 11 million boxes that go out, three quarters of them are packed in the United States and shipped uh, to other countries. Uh, more importantly, um, countries like Germany, Australia, and a couple other ones, uh, like Germany a couple years ago did 800,000 boxes, and they shipped to like maybe a dozen countries. So that's the beauty of it. It's truly a worldwide ministry to reach out. Yeah, that, that piece is, is an amazing piece. I can't even imagine the coordination that oh, it takes. To, yes, yeah. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> to so do the, all of that. The one big point is please go online to their website, Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. Have a plethora of ideas. Uh, you can pack a shoebox online without yeah. touching a shoebox. Pick the items out you oh, want. Wow. And then it's a $9 investment to cover shipping. So um, inside there it shows, and you can designate which age category you want in a boy or a girl. Okay. Like Dorothy does one for a girl, I do one for a boy. So it's real important that people understand that even if you're isolated and can't get out, you can go to the website and not only get fired up for Jesus, but you can 
pack a shoebox online. Yeah. So there really is no reason why anybody That's couldn't exactly do it. Right. Couldn't do right. something. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, well, boy, they've thought of everything, haven't they? They have, yeah. They, they, every year they come up with a new one. I'll tell but you now, because of the COVID pandemic, where people are isolated or not allowed to go to places, the grace of God goes without, out, without any barriers. Yeah. It's wide open. Yeah. So we do have a COVID-19 page. That's the first thing when you open up that website. Okay. Talking about we're very sensitive to state regulations. You know, we follow all the guidelines here. Or sanitation, and if we don't have the congregation open in October, we're going to be passing them out every Thursday, 9:30 to 10:30 on the south entrance. It'll be in the Eden okay. newsletter, yeah. But we'll do that way. So it'll be a drive-through, yeah, drive kind of drive-through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Kind of like the old yeah. mail days, right, with the mail bag. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, that's right. Boy, yeah. it's been it's been a strange <laughs> ride. I will tell you that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it has been. You yeah. know, I've been doing this for forty something years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never experienced anything quite like this. Uh, well, we've read every science fiction comic book and seen every movie, and there was never anything like this. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, never. I tell you, it's uh, it's certainly a strange and mysterious time. What we're grateful for is it sounds like to me that uh, these folks have done their homework mm -hmm. on the pandemic mm -hmm. and have made the changes yes. appropriate to be safe for everybody involved. Yeah, they used to do items, even if they were wrapped like candy, no food items at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it uh, sounds like uh, we can start doing our shopping early. Yes. That's exactly, exactly. right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and year round. Year round. Year round. <laughs> and we can reach out to the world now. Yeah, wow. So. Other missionaries we have are awesome. This is one you can go even one more step. Yes, sir. Tell about the Thousand Islands. Yeah. It, one of the goals in the, there's a Thousand Islands in the Pacific that they want to cover with uh, shoeboxes. They want to make sure every of these thousand islands, everybody gets a shoebox. Uh, so they're, they're, that's a long-term, I mean, it's a several-year project, but it, it's that's a lot of islands. And those you, are, you know, I'm reading, a, I'm a big uh, history buff, so I read a lot of, uh, I lead a, read a lot of history, and I'm reading a book right now on uh, uh, Douglas MacArthur, mm -hmm. you know, the great mm -hmm. general that uh, uh, was over, uh, the the Pacific uh, theater of war in World War II, and uh, I'm learning a lot about a lot of those <laughs> islands. Thousand <laughs> islands, yes. Oh, yes. And you know, in yes. the book, they talk about the scope, just how large that theater of war was. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, uh, wow. Well, that's the goal: is the thousand islands in the Pacific. So, uh, well, Indonesia is the fifth biggest country in the world. Who would have thought that? Oh, my yeah. God. Well, I didn't realize yeah. that. When they had the islands that are under its umbrella, they're the fifth largest country. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, and, but, you know, you'd, you, you would think, you know, well, we've been just about everywhere, mm -hmm. but the world's a big place. It is a big yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, the other good thing is that it sounds like that uh, they're continuing to be diligent um, related to finding places where uh, they oh, haven't yeah. reached haven't. yet. And oh, yes. That's, that's, uh, that's I, something that... When you look at some of these videos and some of the pictures that are in the literature and just see the look in the kids' faces, it's just amazing. Yeah, and I think we're going to embed uh, in this, in this uh, yes. uh, portion mm -hmm. of our midweek, uh, we're going to embed one of the videos that... Mm -hmm shows some of what you guys yeah, it's a two man yeah, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes so that'll be yeah. good to, for people to be able to see mm -hmm. and kind of get a feel for what what that looks like on the receiving end of yeah. thing yeah. yeah this year has been a pandemic year children are hurting all over the world people are afraid families are scared people have lost their jobs they don't know where to go what to do they don't know what hope they have for the future well, I want every child to know that God loves them, that God has not forgotten them, and that He cares for them very much. And when you pack a shoebox and send it to Operation Christmas Child, it gives us an opportunity to give that box to a child and do it in Jesus' name. Can you just imagine the hope and the thrill and the joy of when a kid opens up a lid like this and all these toys are in it? It's an incredible gift. And so I just want to say thank you. We need your help this year more than we've ever needed it because of the pandemic. It's just going to create a lot more opportunity. Thank you and God bless you. And remember, pray for the children of the world.
Well, wow. Uh, yeah. Is there anything uh, that we can do related to volunteerism uh, from this point on? Well, I know we're deep into family ministries in our church. Um, we raised three boys here, K through 12, in college. It's been a real joy. We've been here 40 years. And um, between James and Sandy and Monica and, and Priscilla, all of the connections to children, either tweens or teens, or, or un, because they, they start at four, four to six-year-old is mm -hmm. one of the categories. So uh, volunteers... Um, they don't have to come to us. You can just jump on it yourself. Just have the box ready the week of the 16th to the 23rd of November. <laughs> That's the challenge. Yeah, that is but challenge. Uh, yeah, there's endless volunteer opportunities to help out. Okay, I, you know, and I'd just like to throw this out there. If any groups in our church uh, would like to take this sure. project on, I'm sure oh, you yeah. guys would welcome that uh, oh, yeah. as well. That the more, be. the merrier. Yes. And we're going to be positive this <laughs> yes. year. It's yes, November, not November. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, Whoa. <laughs> That's hard to say, uh, too. Yes, yes November. I'll That's have right. to yeah. remember that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Zig Ziglar line. Is that a yeah. Zig Ziglar line? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, the best thing, though, Travis, is based on last Sunday's conversation, today you gave us a look into the future. We now know what you're going to talk about on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Let the cat out of the bag. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you still need to watch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That was just a small uh, clip. That's, that's, yep. <laughs> that's right. Uh, oh, me. Well, um, is there anything else that you think we need to cover or visit about related to Operation Christmas Child? Give us the dates again. Uh, the dates will be in October every Thursday, 9.30 to 10.30, to pick up all the supplies, which are free. And the collection week is where you bring the packed chew boxes back here to church is November 16th, which is a Monday, to the following Monday, November 23rd. Okay. And all those details are online. So anytime, and even there's been in the past, we've had people call after collection week and say, we got a couple boxes at the church office, and um, we've sent them. UPS ourselves to, uh, yeah. okay. to North Carolina, yeah. Great. We won't turn them down no matter when you bring them in. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, that sounds like the church as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing that we'll uh, try to make sure when we run this, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't put the um, website down on the bottom sure. so yeah. people yeah. can Appreciate see that. that while we're uh, visiting and they can certainly mm -hmm. pick it up off the screen and go to the website if they choose to. And we don't offer paid volunteers, but there's a paid volunteer position to pack, ship the shoeboxes that we talked about in Capel. Literally, you go online, you can sign up, and you'll work, I think it's four weeks for sure, maybe eight weeks at that facility getting this all together. So, oh, wow. yeah, so online, it has a place for that too, a paid position. Oh, well, good. Yeah. yeah. So, anyone out there looking for some part time work? Yeah. Um, this would be a great way Perfect to. Way. Uh, get paid for doing something really, really helpful. No, that's exactly right. That reaches beyond yourself to touch uh, other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Oh, one important thing. Every hour when they're going through the boxes, they stop and pray for that box. Oh, Every hour. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. yeah. So I'm getting the feeling this whole experience is pretty bathed in prayer. Oh, it's it unbelievably it bathed. It is. Well, there yep. is great power in prayer. We all know and believe that. That's right. That's for sure. Yeah. Anything else that we need to know? Oh, we just really appreciate yeah. the opportunity. Yeah. Thank oh, you, for, we thank you for having us oh, here. We're grateful that you guys took out the time to come up and yep. share the, the good work that's going to be, uh, well, that's already begun yeah. and certainly uh, in the queue, so to speak. <laughs> Right. Uh, again, we appreciate so much uh, both of you taking the lead on this, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll just be in prayer, and we'll see at 150 plus. That's right, big on the plus. You bet, big we're going to get there, I am sure. Yes. Uh, I think it would be good for us today to just go ahead and have a prayer okay. uh, over uh, this next few weeks and our involvement Perfect. in this. So let's bow forward to prayer. Oh God, how blessed we are today to be together again and to be united as the church. And we ask your blessing upon uh, Neil and John and all of those, O oh God, who will be a part of this great project. 
And we certainly pray for those who will be on the receiving end of these gifts that they indeed might sense your love present, that they might be open and receptive, O oh God, to what you will be able to do through a simple gift. We thank you for all of those who are involved in this process. We ask your blessing and your prayers upon them. We certainly ask your blessing and prayers upon our church as we seek to step to the plate to do our part and to join together uh, in a worldwide effort to see that uh, the word and love of Jesus our Lord is spread throughout the world. We give ourselves in this work to you, Lord. And like that mustard seed story, who knows what you will do with all of that. We'll be depending and leaning into that, oh God, in the next weeks as we seek to do our small part. We thank you again for Neil and John and their leadership. We ask your blessing and your presence to be with them as they seek to be faithful and fruitful in seeing this project through. In the name and spirit of the risen Lord, we serve. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you guys you. for being thank with you. us. Oh, thank you. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time. Be looking in your e-news for all of this vital information about how to be involved in Operation Christmas Child. Thank you and blessings. Current information about the effects of COVID-19 precautions at First Grapevine Church, visit firstgrapevine.org slash COVID-19 updates.